You're having a nightmare. <laughs> you think that helps a person having a nightmare to be hit? I'm sorry, next time you're having a nightmare, I'll let you suffer in peace. Do you like taking a little nap, John, just in case I should experience a sudden urge to slap you around a little bit? You were having sex in your dream. That was some dream. <laughs> sorry, I missed it. <laughs> what were you doing? Nothing. Just listening. Whom were you having sex with? You, apparently. I can't believe you would eavesdrop. <laughs> You're not jealous, are you? No, I'm not jealous. Why should I be jealous? We're under a lot of stress, John. You should make a little teeny tiny sign and hang it from your eyelashes. We are under stress. Don't you agree that we're under stress? Yes, okay, fine. We are under stress. Big fucking deal. What time is it? Almost seven. Oh. Well, good. Okay. <clears throat> I can go back to my dream. <clears throat> I love you. I love you too. sanctimoniousness of thy personality. I hate thy breath. I hate thine irritating effusiveness. And most of all, I hate that thee thinks thee knows one minuscule thing about me when in reality thou does not know squat. <laughs> Try 
trying to make a point, that's all. Little did I know you would take advantage. So how do you know that if a woman is having a reaction? Doesn't matter now, forget it. How do you feel? I feel freaked out. <coughs> freaked out is not an emotion, John. You I know. feel confused. I feel stupid. That's all. Isn't that profound? <coughs> not much separating you from every marginal imbecile who buys himself a semi-automatic rifle and goes on a shooting spree. I don't know why I did it. I did it because I was confused. What do you want me to say? How you feel. You just shot your mother. You don't feel guilty, you don't feel sad, you don't feel liberated. You feel stupid and confused. Where's the gun? Under the blanket by her feet. <coughs> Hi, Carly. <laughs> How you feel now? Jesus! I... I feel sick of this whole damn thing, okay? Yeah, me too. But we have work to do, don't we, Jack? Little Jack. My name is John. Yes, of course it is. I'm Abe Lincoln. Nice to meet you. What are you doing here? I freed all the slaves. Maybe you missed my latest proclamation on CNN. Horner, isn't it? Little Jack Horner? Is that where in a corner? Doing what? Eating, eating what? His Christmas pie! Thank you. Little Jack Horner sat in the corner eating his Christmas pie. He stuck in his thumb and pulled out a plum and said, what a good boy am I.
John, let's focus on why you hate women. I said, why well, restrict it to women? My father was humiliated by my very existence. He couldn't wait to find the most dramatic moment to put a bullet through his temple. And both my stepfathers abused me in their unique and lasting ways before bailing out. And my mother, we all know about. And you want me to trust you? I'll be so glad when this is over. <clears throat> I think Dr. Gorman is a psychopath. <laughs> You're probably right. But if he can help you, it doesn't matter if he's Bob Packwood. <laughs> <laughs> You think I'm a strange bed fellow? You know what you do in the middle of the night? You finger. Excuse me? You play the piano in your sleep, usually on my back. I'm sorry. <laughs> you know what I wish more than anything in the world? <clears throat> that I would stop? That someday you would play for me. That you would sit here and play Chopin or Mozart or Brahms lullaby. I'm sorry. I don't mean to sound like somebody's mother. It's just my dream. about you. 
yourself. <laughs> I beg your pardon? Your training, you're a therapist. What is your background? Uh, I am a PhD, a cl clinical psychologist, a Jungian scholar, and the author of several unpublished papers and lots of other stuff, lots of seminars and stuff. I don't need to tell you this. But you did, and I appreciate it. How old are you? What? <laughs> it's none of your business. I see. I thought honesty was the catch word in this room. Approximately 50, old enough. How old are you? 61. Really? Right, you look pretty good for 61. <laughs> Thank you. You look pretty good for approximately 50. <laughs> Thank you. What is your name? Dolores. Oh, that's very exotic. My name is Cy, Dr. Cy Gorman. You have very beautiful legs for a woman of any age. Thank you. Would you like to see more of them? <laughs> Maybe. Well, you'll have to decide quickly. Each second you delay costs me a nickel. <laughs> I'll be a little longer. Something's come up. <laughs> Get on your knees. Why? The view will be better. <laughs> I want to see you beg like a dog. <laughs> bark, please. Bark? Mm -hmm. You want me to bark? <laughs> Arf, woof, bow, wow. Oh, I think you could do better than that. <coughs> Ow! Woof, 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 woof. That's very good. That's enough. You can get up now. I would like to see more. I would like more. Too bad. It's my nickel. We have other things to do. Get up. <laughs> well, what did you have in mind? I would like to talk about a client of yours, John Bonet. John? <coughs> you, know, you, you know John? In a manner of speaking. He's my <coughs> son. <laughs> You're John's mother? That would be another way of putting it. <laughs>
Mercedes Benz. Of course you do. <laughs> Let's imagine you have a block in your fuel line. The gas can't get to the engine. Do you know what happens? The car freezes. It can no longer function. Do you work as a mechanic on the side? <laughs> First, John can't play. Next, he can't teach. He can't drive. He's afraid to use the phone. I've seen it happen. People come to me crippled in their fear and their anger and confusion, and, and I, with the help of God and Freud, try to reach them. That's my calling. And I am humbled by the responsibility, and I am inspired by the satisfaction of seeing one wounded bird take one tiny courageous flight. Not in front of my Mercedes, one hopes. <laughs> Tell me, what is it that you do exactly to help these poor little mixed metaphors? Whatever is necessary. That depends on how deeply the client has been affected and how far he dare go to free himself. How far could that be? Murder? Could he go so far as to murder someone? His mother, for instance? I discovered this in my son's house. You discovered it? How did you discover it? I snooped. How do mothers ever discover anything? <laughs> John is not a gun sort of person. That's not what I've raised him to be. I also have his diary. Oh, good God, how could you? <laughs> it wasn't terribly difficult. It was in his sock drawer where he's always hidden his diaries. <laughs> it strikes me that keeping them in such an obvious hiding place suggests he, he wants them to be found. Wouldn't you say, psychologically speaking? I wouldn't know. Well, you should have had him show this to you. You might have learned something. For instance, had the same dream last night, woke up sweating blood. That's a nice image, isn't it, for someone who isn't exactly William Wordsworth? Making love with a woman with balls. What do you think about that? A mother might surmise it has something to do with homosexuality. Homosexual might surmise it has something to do with mother. I think that he's referring to Carly. You know who Carly is? Yes, I do. Yes, yes, of course, he would tell you. If I hadn't found her underwear in his clothes hamper, I might never have known. She probably does have testicles. I have always said you never can trust those little mousy ones. They're just waiting to grab the cheese when no one's looking. <laughs> I've always said you shouldn't read someone else's diary. You may learn something you don't want to know. Indeed. Good session with Dr. Gorman, even though he's probably crazier than all of us combined. <laughs> Carly says it turns her on how assertive I'm becoming. Never had more orgasm, she says. And here we come to our most recent entry. Feeling my strongest ever. Can't wait till Friday night. Murdering mother at last. Well? Well, what? What is your learned interpretation of what I've read you? <clears throat> it would not be professional of me to discuss my client with anyone else, particularly his mother. And obviously you have a paragon of professionalism in your bow-wow way. <laughs> I am like everyone else, the sum total of my many and occasionally contradictory parts. I make no apologies. I see. Well, perhaps you could tell me in an unprofessional way, if you would like, hypothetically, what it might mean if someone happens to mention murdering his mother. It may mean many things. Give me the worst. He wants to murder you. If you could possibly betray your hypocritical oath, <laughs> perhaps you could give me your position on the subject. If I could lure you away from the personal and into the figurative, many of my clients commit murder symbolically. They murder their wives if their wives are the problem, or they, they murder their bosses and their careers, or their sexual inhibitions and their phobia, their sadness, their self-hatred. Sometimes we, uh, sometimes we become children. Or puppy dogs, if you like. Sometimes we use props. Sometimes we use catchphrases like murdering mother. Do you get it? 
understand more every time you open your mouth. <laughs> it's no wonder that John was virtually crawling by the time he got to me. I will not allow him to see you anymore. <laughs> I beg your pardon. But it's a damn good thing he found me. I don't think he should murder you. I think that's too good for you. <laughs> I think you should be drawn and quartered. <laughs> Stick bamboo shoots under your false fingernails. Unstable some of the multitude of tucks you've invested so heavily in to keep your civil faces from sagging beyond human recognition. That's a problem. Look, if you need help, and it's clear that you do, make an appointment, but not with me. My son will not see you anymore. Is this a threat? Because if it is, I have to tell you, there aren't real bullets in the gun, they're blanks. That's all part of the... Just because John is a bit of a whip about guns, don't think it runs in the family. <laughs> <laughs> My first husband was a crack shot, blew his brains out in one try. <laughs> oh, this is a new one. <laughs> I've never been shot by a client before, or a client's mother. You don't mind if I take notes, do you? For some inexplicable reason, you seem to think I'm joking. <laughs> I am not joking. Jesus Christ, you're nuts, Oi! <laughs> Takes one to know one, I know. Are you okay? Oh, oh yes, uh, having a bang up time in here. <laughs> what is it you want exactly? I want my son to discontinue therapy with you. I want you to call him and tell him it's just not such a good idea after all. Why don't you tell him yourself? He won't listen to me. You know how he is. But what makes you think I'll listen to you? Under the circumstances, I would say you have very little choice. Pick up the phone. The call in between classes. The idiot secretary will probably tell you he's in a staff meeting. Say it's an emergency. That's what I always do. Pick up the phone. It's 489. I know the number, I think. Hello, uh, this is Dr. Gorman. It's, um, it's very important that I speak with Mr. Bonet. Thank you. John, uh, John, I'm afraid we're going to have to take a little break. Don't you tell him I'm here or I'll shoot you now. <laughs> no, we, have a, we have a little dragonfly in the ointment. <laughs> no, you're making wonderful progress, John. No, I, I know you're on the verge of a major breakthrough, but no, John. But is he crying? John, no, I... I don't think killing yourself is going to do anybody any good, John, least of all you. John, no, no, please. Don't you dare kill yourself, John Bonet. <laughs> you did not call him. No, I didn't. I was acting. Pretty convincing, eh? <laughs> it's what we do to, to diffuse the drama of, of real life. You should try it sometime. You should try acting your age. I did. I didn't like it. <laughs> if you could just find the generosity to, to let him continue our innocent little process, he's so close. You'll be giving him the greatest legacy a parent can give a child. Freedom. It's of no danger to you. To John, it's his whole life that's at stake. Please, out of your love. How do I know you're not acting now? I have spent 25 years trying to figure out who's acting and who's not, but this is not about me or you, scandalous as that may seem. This is John's moment. You may not approve of my methods, and John may think I'm insane, which, frankly, I resent. But at least he has me, and Carly, and I would hope and pray his mother. What do I owe you? It's on the house. When I was young, no one needed therapy. We just accepted things the way they were. Well, that's why we need therapy now. <laughs> <laughs> I will allow my son to have one more appointment with you. 
thank you in advance for helping him if, in fact, it turns out that's what you have done. On the other hand, if I determine that you have hurt his natural development into becoming the fine <coughs> man I've always intended for him to be, then I shall have to come back and pay you another visit. Let us hope that will not be necessary. Uh, would you mind uh, going out this way, please? I, I have someone waiting. You'll be giving him a great gift, Dolores. He's never liked anything I've given him before. I hope I don't see you again. I hope not, too. Bye. God, help me! <laughs> <laughs> Was a 
joke. <laughs> you haven't said how I look, dear. You look fine. Thank you so much. I work so hard to look fine. I don't know what you want me to say. You're not aging, if that's what you're afraid of. No, of course I'm not aging.
honesty, I know. I think I was trying to pry you away from your doctor's influence and from, from what's her name too, I suppose. I suppose it stems from some latent insecurity on my part and I apologize. <coughs> Please don't torture me. Please tell me you forgive me. It's all right. It's not all right, but thank you. I'm sure I'm a very disappointing mother. <coughs> Can we be friends again? We could shake on it. That would be a form of physical contact anyway. You have no idea how discomforting it is to have your child angry at you. You know, you've been very lucky that you've never found anyone important enough to you that you wanted to propagate with. But I'm sure you would have loved to make me a grandmother. I'm sorry if it seemed as if I were making allegations. Why don't we just drop it? Good idea. I just wish I hadn't walked in on them, hugging away like chimpanzees. Aren't you two having a marvelous time? Oh, you're so lucky to have each other. My mother's not with me anymore. There are so many times I regret the things I never had a chance to say. There are times I regret the things I said, too. I, I called her a bitch. <laughs> Which she was sometimes. <laughs> she was disagreeable, selfish, and frankly a little disgusted by me, I think. And she had this naggy kind of way of talking. She drove me like bananas. Whining, whining, whining. And when she breathed, you could hear this sort of rattling. <laughs> Now you you have 
question of becoming aware of things. Like the fact that I have been seeing the same scenery go by the last 10 years, it finally occurred to me I wasn't moving. I finally have someone who really loves me and wants to help me realize my potential. Well, isn't that wonderful, dear? Who is it? Carly. Really? <laughs> well, it's no wonder you'd be upset about her and Dr. Gorman and the magic turn out to be true. No fight to God, it isn't. Is Carly part of the little psychedelics, too? I see. And what does she play? Tinkerbell? Have everybody clap their hands and think happy thoughts? Oh, uh, now there goes my insecurity again. Sorry. She plays you. I think you're fine. She represents you in the exercise. Dr. Gorman thought it would be a good idea to have someone loving and trusting standing in for you. So I could focus my emotions in a positive way. Bless his depraved little heart. It's really a good thing. I hope you realize that. I feel so close to something. I don't know what. I feel more hopeful than I have in a long time. And I'm very grateful to you for understanding. Surprised, but grateful. I'm glad I can help. Perhaps this way you will understand that, that there's more than one person who really loves you. I know that. I hope you do. It would make me very sad if you thought that I had anything but your best interests at heart. No one would be happier than I than to see you realize your potential. <laughs> <laughs> Look at all this physical contact. <laughs> We're suddenly a family of Italians. <laughs> Thank you, Mother. Yeah, please, you can stop thanking me. It's beginning to feel like a testimonial. Oh, John, I'm your best pal. I'm your number one fan. In fact, it's in that spirit I've decided to be there. Beware. At the murder. Uh, no, that wouldn't work. Oh, well, don't be silly. It would be better. You could put the bullet right between Mother's <coughs> eyes. No, you cannot be there. That would ruin it. Well, I'm going to be there. You can't murder me without me. No, no, no. Oh, so much for your potential, unless this is it. You never let me have the space to be myself. Space does it take to murder mother? You want your freedom? I'll happily give it to you, especially if you're going to spend the rest of your life acting like this. I'll murder you right now, goddammit! Well, no, no, my God, please! <laughs> take me instead! Please <laughs> sit down, we'll resume holding hands and we'll eat whatever lunch this sweet young man can sell. I'll see you some other time. In another life, maybe. I'll see you Friday night at the showdown. You better get in a little target practice here. We don't want to spend all night hoping you get on the lucky shot. <laughs> He's out of sorts. <laughs> he wants to kill me. I'm trying so hard to be a good sport about it. A mother's work is never done. <laughs> Yeah.
Where's Mother Superior? She's not gonna be late for her own funeral, I hope. She's upstairs, getting ready. Uh, I've gotta go. Oh, Carly, you angel, no. kiss me quick. I need you to kiss me. Can you behave yourself? I'm supposed to be helping John, not you. You're beyond help. <laughs> Why'd you have to get drunk? I didn't have to. I chose to. <laughs> Where's your sense of history? All my heroes had to get plots before they could face their demons. Doc Holliday, Ulysses S. Grant, <laughs> Dean Martin. Uh, and Cy Gordon <laughs> as Jerry Lewis. <laughs>
starts to perform. That's what we used to call psychiatrists. Trick cyclists. <laughs> it's a funny image, like a, a big monkey on a teeny weeny bike. <laughs> <laughs> So, John, do you just start firing away, or what? No, that's not, no. Why not? Blow our friggin' brains out. <laughs> we actually have a ritual to perform. That is, John sided. I don't have lines? No. No, no, you, you just sit there and, and act motherly. <laughs> uh, I usually pretend to be asleep when I play the part. That way John can focus more on his emotions and less on the actual person. I'll stay awake, then. What about you, now that the part's been recast? I run the camera. Oh, a technical quiz. <laughs> Always handy to have one around the house. Sai, should we start? Uh, we should have a drink is what we should do. No, we shouldn't. I'm not used to performing in front of a crowd. Pretend it's an orgy. <laughs> <laughs>
inside your body for nine months, this could give birth to you, John. Do you remember that? No, not very vividly. Hi, baby, hunting. Daddy's gone the hunting, and baby's come a tumbling flat on his face, covered in slime and connected by an umbilical cord. This is a tiny bit personal. And the think. doctor took scissors and he cut you free. Look, John, look, you see, it's gone. No more cord, you see? Yes, I guess so. How does that make you feel? Makes me feel glad I'm not paying for this rubbish. <laughs> Lars, you've got to let him answer. Oh, excuse me, I'm sure. I'm only trying to be helpful. It makes me sad. Because it was innocent. I was born because they had passion for each other and they <clears throat> loved me. Didn't you? Well, of course I loved you. Don't be ridiculous. What happened? Your, your father died. How'd he die? You know how he died. He shot himself because he was weak. <coughs> she married again. You had a new father. What happened to him? He left. Why? For the same reason. He was a liar and a con artist. And so was the next one. I wanted to find a man of moral fiber to be John's father. But they were all the same. They all deserted us. How did that make you feel? <coughs> Not great. It's an unwritten promise when we're plucked from the womb, you know. We get an extended service contract. It's in our warranty. <laughs> Mom and Dad is supposed to protect us. Keep us well used <coughs> and oiled. And you don't think that happened for you, do you, John? <laughs> Not exactly. Since you had more love than you knew what to do with. Why did you stick around if you weren't loved? Good question. Unexpectedly insightful and intelligent. Thank you. Tell him, John, if you can get a word in it. There are different kinds of love. Some you get for free and some you have to pay for. I think she wanted me to be the kind of man she wanted my fathers to be. And when I wasn't, she was angry. Ah, what kind of man? I don't know. Sculptures in a wax museum. Apostles of Christ. Perfect would have been a good starting point. God's sake, I wanted them to live up to their responsibilities as men. And that's all I wanted from you, too. But the other three left one way or another, and here you are, 40 years later, still attached. Let me see your belly button. No, if he was my child, what was I supposed to do, divorce him? Why do you think that is, John? If he wanted to continue being <coughs> mummy's baby, then that's his problem. Quiet! You bought a ticket to the show, shut up and watch it. Where do you think you are in the movies? <laughs> John, I want to know why you didn't go. Though we didn't have bus fare, the doorknob was too high. What was it? She wouldn't let me. Well, you could do whatever you wanted. You're not a child anymore. I will not allow you to speak that way. I just won't allow it. She made me feel guilty. <laughs> as if it were my fault my father's left. As if I owed it to her to never leave myself. To this. Here I thought we were going to have a nice, simple little murder. I didn't realize you'd be playing Perry Mason. Did you do something wrong? Did you chase them away? Yet you still feel guilty. That's a tough one. <coughs> Makes me want to cry. I can see how that would turn a person into a little whip of chicken shit, scared to cat. Sorry, are you going somewhere with this? I think you're leaving some of us behind. You want to get free here? It's okay, John, it's safe. No, you're not really planning to shoot me, are you? <coughs> because you can't. It's out of the question. You'll just have to shoot someone else. Shoot Carly. <laughs> shoot yourself. Go on, Tyler. Go, Tyler. No, I don't <coughs> think this idiotic game is over. You wanted to be here, you have to play. I do not, and you have no right to try to drive my son away. This is my business, to help him separate and get clear. The only thing that's clear is that you're a fast talker like most men, and John is very susceptible. You should be ashamed of yourself. I want nothing more to do with it. Fine, good, good riddance. Carly, we need the understudy. <coughs> John, this woman is your mother. How do you feel about it? She is not his mother. You people are deranged. Come on, tell me how you feel. I feel embarrassed, frankly, not to mention heading for crazy. Well, you're right at home in this group. Dolores, you don't have to be scared. It's going to be okay. Are you being nice to me, Carly? Please don't. Very <coughs> shocked, How old do you feel, John? When you look at your mother, you feel like a little boy. How old are you? How does that make you feel? Ba, 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 ba. Ba. She made me sit with my father after he shot himself, before the people came to take him away. We were both frightened. I had no choice. <laughs> yes, yes, what is it? Come on, come on. She 
She made me kiss her. What? It was my first date when I was 12, I think, or 13. She made me kiss her to practice. Ugh. Well, where was he supposed to learn? On the playground? <laughs> <laughs> well, I resent having to defend myself. Of course, you don't have to defend yourself. This is not about you. Not much. <laughs> what are you staring at? I am shocked. John, I want to know why you didn't go to New York or somewhere. Play the piano, face the music, as they say. I didn't have the courage. But you had the talent, didn't you? I don't know. What did Mommy Dearest say? Did she say you didn't have the talent? She didn't say I didn't. She didn't say I did. For God's sake, I was protecting you. There are <coughs> millions of talented children. I don't see why you had to put so much emphasis on the stupid piano. I'm the one who gave him the lessons. I suppose if you had your way, Carnegie Hall would be overflowing with prodigies who can play three blind mice with two hands. <laughs> it's a symbol. John does not need a mother to tell him he's talented or intelligent or worthy, although it might be nice. I'm helping him understand he can make his own decisions. I see. And it's some sort of travesty for a mother to be concerned about him and, and guide him, but it's perfectly all right for him to listen to a manipulative, money-grubbing, perverted fraud. Correct! <coughs> and you know why? Thank you, by the way. Because it's my job to help my clients function better, and I will sacrifice whatever is necessary to accomplish that mission, including you and your extraordinary megalomania. Are you going to murder me, too? It's an ambush. Don't tempt me. <coughs> people like you are always afraid of people like me. As well we might be. Excuse me, are you fighting over me? <laughs> what, do I get to relive my entire childhood in one <coughs> night? You know why I frighten you? I can think of a dozen reasons offhand, none of them being the sort of thing a lady would say out loud. Because I'm good. Aren't I? Yes, for a college dropout. <laughs> he saved my life, that's all. I owe him everything. He's a very smart man. I'm sure. What fairy tale character was he that time? Humpty Dumpty? <laughs> Pied Piper. That's why I scare the shit out of all the selfish mommies and daddies who can't bear to lose control. And this is who? Someone in the rodent family? Mother. <laughs> my child. These are my children. We have all of us stood on the bridge sometimes and stared into the icy water of our disillusion, but we don't always jump. You know why? Because along comes an angel and it's a wonderful life. <laughs> Great God, an angel comes to help us until we remember how to help ourselves and we dare climb back to safety. London Bridge is falling down. <laughs> I've been checking up on you, Mr. Gorman. You're a real prize with a psychiatric board of review, aren't you? Did you know that, John, your beloved witch doctor has been called out four times on questionable practices, including <coughs> unnecessarily bullying and frightening his clients? My job is to bully and frighten and challenge. And that if they get a fifth complaint, which they will Monday morning, they will strip him of his license. Let him try. I get results, don't I, Carly? Am I killing someone here or not? <laughs> tell her, tell her how you were when you came to me. It's none of her business. This is for John. You're helping John. We're helping him. Dolores, don't you want to help him? Carly was one of the complaints, John. It seems that her former boyfriend took exception to the fact that she and Mr. Gorman were having an affair while she was his client. Bullshit. Yes. Stop it! I will not have you sabotage. <coughs> She's a decent person. She wouldn't hurt me. Ask her. Well, I always deny everything just as a matter of principle. I was <coughs> very vulnerable. And Sai is very horny. But it was a long time before I even met you, and it wasn't important. It was a little important. What was important was that he helped me. He shouldn't have slept with me, and I shouldn't have slept with him either, but he taught me so much <coughs> about having options that I could fix myself. That's why I wanted you to go to him. I never told you. I'm sorry, I should have told you. Well, I really think I'm having a drink now. Now can we put an end to this nonsense, John? We're not finished. We don't have to do any more, John. 
so many. <laughs> I want to know about my own and how I'm supposed to solve them. Is, is that the moral? I have to do it all by myself because everybody else has a an agenda, an excuse, or something to hide. John, that's not true. It was a long time ago. So are the dinosaurs, but I still have nightmares about them. I think I nearly squandered my evening by going to the theater, and here I can see real life as performed by lunatics. Quiet!
square so I don't step in it. <laughs> You're a brave man, John. I'm leaving now. You must remember this. Sheep's in the meadow, the cows in the corn, and the truth will set you free. Try to find it. It's like looking for hay in a haystack. Where's he going? Now, oh, this. This is what I get for making house calls. If I contract pneumonia and die, it's going to cost you extra. Shouldn't I be allowed to state my case? You haven't done anything wrong, Dolores, have you? Not according to him. I've been a model mother. You did your best. That's all any of us can do. Then why is he pointing a gun at me? You have to let him go through the ritual. You said you wanted to help. Sometimes you have to let him hate you. All you can do is hope that when he's free and he can look back, you will have earned his love. <gasps> Some of us 
just go on a shitty day.
Let's show them we know how to hug, too. They want to hear you play, John. Mother can make you play, can't she? Come on. Play your scales like a good boy. Come. See. Shoot it. We'll say it was a lover's quarrel. Do it! Do it! 
No one will ever know. It's on videotape. She can't be trusted, John. She has ulterior motives. Is that true? I wanted to free the tiger. That was all. What are you talking about? You people are crazy. What sort of a life do you expect to have living here in this, this little house and playing your stupid piano and living with her? It won't last any longer than all the others. You'll come crawling back to me. We're having a child. Of course you're not having a child. No one told me. First time I saw John helping some frightened boy with his music, I knew that under his pain was the kindest man. I hope somewhere you can understand that. I love him very much. You won't let them hurt me, will you? Sorry, you're going to have to have this hanging over you too, but it won't go away. I won't go away. <coughs> the reality is, I hate you. What do you think about that? I'm sorry. Thank you!